Everybody's heard that we have to have high levels of omega-3s in our diet, and I agree with that. By and large, omega-3 oils tend to be inflammation reducing. Uh, hopefully will offset the incredible amount of omega-6s that have found their way into the American diet uh, in the form of various vegetable oils that seem to be so commonly uh, used in our society. But the question is, how do we make sense of all the omega-3s that are out there? Krill oil, algae-derived oil, fish-derived oil, uh, and it really can be a bit compelling. Uh, I, I know that there's a big push for krill oil. I'm concerned about krill oil from at least the perspective of sustainability. We now know that there are factory ships that have gone into Antarctica and are really harvesting excessive amounts of krill. Uh, krill is the beginning of a food change that makes its way all the way up to cetaceans, which are whales and porpoises and other mammals. So we don't want to threaten our mammal friends. So I think that we need to look at more sustainable uh, choices. Uh, Algae-derived DHA is certainly very sustainable, uh, does provide DHA, a very important omega-3, but typically does not include uh, the EPA component. So I tend to recommend uh, fish oil. I think that there are some very good sources of clean uh, fish oil with low levels of oxidation that do contain a DHA along with the EPA. I like a dosage of the DHA of around 1,000 to 1,200 milligrams per day. And it's important to look at the capsule or at least the label and that'll tell you how much DHA is in each capsule. Then of course you've got to do the math. I think it's reasonable to keep your uh, omega-3 supplement in the refrigerator. Uh, to help reduce its oxidase, oxidation and recognize that you can get a lot of DHA just by eating some wild salmon or other, other wild fish.